prepared this notes uh, before seeing uh, the presentation over there. So since I don't believe in rational expectation, it means that there is some uh, common feeling on, uh, uh, on how, we see the, how we see the economy. Well, these further thoughts are further notes on the consequences uh, <coughs> of finance uh, in, on the real economy. Well, we have already discussed, and uh, Mariana has, uh, <coughs> uh, has, uh, has discussed it extensively together with other people that as effort, as a <coughs> leading warrior uh, of, uh, of innovation, the financial sector has a very mixed record, to say the best. Uh, and in any case, uh, this is uh, the need of ex massive external finance typically occurs uh, in uh, uh, new technologies, new paradigms, and new firms, toward which uh, finance performs reasonably badly. In fact, uh, most of the time, uh, investment is, uh, or at least can be, self-financed by internal cash flow. In all Western countries, uh, a minimum of, say, 50 percent, but is a, uh, is a minimum uh, in, in continental Europe, in, in Anglo-Saxon countries, much higher, uh, is financed uh, uh, with internal, investment is financed with internal cash flow. Uh, you could say, well, this is true on average, but uh, what about uh, single firms? Well, even regarding single firms, uh, these are uh, disaggregated Italian data over the universe of uh, um, uh, firms under 20, over 20 employees, uh, you can see that uh, the model firm uh, does not need uh, uh, external money to finance investment. This, uh, this is the sum of the investment and the sum of gross operating margin. <coughs> uh, and you can, you, you can go over... Uh, <coughs> the uh, various sectors and the things basically don't change. But there are, yes, there are firms uh, that do need, uh, do need external, uh, external finance. And investment is, uh, uh, um, <coughs> is um, uh, lumpy uh, and uh, the financial system um, has to, in some cases, has to step in uh, to provide this lumpy uh, financial resource. Well, does the financial system allocate well uh, to the various firms? That is, uh, does it, uh, uh, the allocation is also a process of selection. Does it select well in the sense that does it select uh, firms that are more efficient, grow more, um, typically, no. Um, I've got uh, the data that I present. I cannot say from which bank they come uh, um, and from which country they come, but um, you can imagine. It's a country where banking system is particularly bad, but I think uh, this tells, uh, tells the lessons uh, also from other banking systems that might, might be more reasonable. Um, <coughs> the, you discriminate, you divide up firms in terms of those that the bank consider high risk and ration the firms or even lead the firm to bankruptcy from those that are low risk and mid risk. Now, as you can see, the distribution of those that, uh, <coughs> that are considered high risk includes very high growth companies. So, there is a whole part of the distribution in which basically the bank is rationing firms that uh, uh, have a high growth potential, an expressed high growth potential, not only, but they've got uh, ha productivity higher than the average. So basically, the, the allocation process uh, is killing a part of uh, the best, the most promising industries. And uh, you, you, you see it uh, 
in this other disaggregated bisector. Um, <clears throat> or uh, you could say that uh, uh, the financial system as uh, a selective device operates uh, in a very biased and anti-growth way. Uh, there is a, a further problem that, uh, uh, that is associated with, uh, with finance. That is recently the financialization of, uh, uh, of the real economy. So uh, the problem is not only how the, uh, the financial system behaves, but is what, what are the behavior that, indu that it induces within the real economy. And uh, <coughs> we have been talking about uh, short-sightedness, uh, and I think uh, uh, yesterday Andy, uh, Andy Aldane has uh, un underlined the issue, and I think uh, uh, it, is a fundamental, uh, it is a fundamental corollary of financialization. Uh, there is uh, basically, uh, and this conference is about that uh, but to, to a large extent, the neglect of uncertain long-term project. In fact, uh, the maximum time horizon of return is the expected tenure of the CEO, uh, and not more. Not only, but uh, the financialization induces a reduction of the payback period that firms use uh, in deciding whether to invest or not. I mean, yes, uh, now people that are uh, also managers went to school and uh, uh, they, uh, they, they seem to use internal rate of returns. But then the rule of the sum at the end is payback period. Uh, they, they have to, to wrap up with internal rate of return because there is on the board uh, the American pension fund that wants to see the, the <coughs> internal rate of return. But, the actual routine is payback period. And the payback period gets shorter. Uh, getting it shorter, it means that uh, uh, also the investment gets more obsolete. Because the payback period is a rule that says, uh, how long will I take uh, to pay back uh, this investment in terms of uh, uh, net uh, gross gains? Uh, and in fact, I mean, there's been studies uh, since the 80s, uh, in fact, abandoned, abandoned later on because they were conflicting with um, <coughs> the uh, dominant uh, mythology of efficient markets. But they were showing that uh, a, <coughs> a good part of the difference uh, in the age between Japanese and American capital stock was precisely the higher impatience of the Americans, and therefore, the fact that they were investing less in new, in new vintages of technologies. Um, <clears throat> well, still, as Adair uh, <clears throat> used to, uh, as Adair underlined, you have uh, a, an explosive growth uh, of uh, <clears throat> financial assets as compared to, to the real uh, uh, to the real economy. Um, is it healthy? Uh, there, are good, there are good reason, including those that are there said and these other that I, I mentioned, that uh, suggested that no, this is, uh, this is an unhealthy setup. Um, do we need, does society and the economy need this huge and growing financial sector? The answer is, our answer I think is no. Uh, in any case, to do what? Uh, at best, uh, to finance investment. To finance investment and to finance infrastructure. We know that, by and large, uh, the, the financial system left to its own is unable to, un to back uh, the, the mission-oriented large-scale project uh, that uh, this conference is about. The point is that it's not even good in financing normal investment and financing infrastructure. How do we get, uh, how to, do we get uh, the system to do its job more properly? Well, uh, partly 
uh, with regulation. Uh, going back to, to Glass Steagall or the nearest, uh, we can glass, get to Glass Steagall. The thing that uh, Andy was saying yesterday, I mean, taxation. Um, <clears throat> knowing very well that uh, you cannot ask uh, an inherently um, impatient uh, private financial sector, you cannot leave to that uh, the job of, that is unnatural in, in for it, uh, to finance uh, or to take the lead in financing the big mission-oriented project that, uh, that we are talking about. And uh, the, we need measure to uh, tame the voracious uh, drive of finance. And again, I think uh, regulation and taxation um, are, uh, uh, are, the, are the main road that would also Yes, it would reduce the liquidity of the system, but there are very good reason why, uh, as Adair was saying, this, uh, uh, this liquidity, uh, in excess liquidity, might uh, underlie <coughs> a systemic instability of the system. How can this be done? And, this I, and here I conclude. I think that... Um, is, is, is the subject of another conference, but uh, uh, this might not be compatible with unbridled globalization. That uh, uh, <clears throat> if, uh, if one wants to undertake uh, these measures, one has got to control, certainly control the international flows uh, of finance, and maybe to some extent, with, with some care, uh, also uh, the flow of goods. Uh, after all, some, someone like ex, general, general, extremely uh, careful, like Danny Roderick in his book a couple of years ago, who was suggesting that uh, uh, you, you have three things that God has given us, globalization, sovereignty, and democracy. But you can have only two out of the, out of the three. Um, and I would certainly opt for sovereignty and democracy. Um, but this is the subject of another conference. Thank you.